traditions from different camps so that was one of them it's a great song to wake up to um, we're also wearing our gloves because um, you know make it, practicing that social distancing we have our Clorox and stuff because we got a comment saying that we need to make sure we're sticking with the time so we're doing that um, so our warm-up today um, is gonna be kind of a Pictionary type thing mm -hmm. so we'll have different like sayings it could be a phrase typed in emojis and then that's going to be pinned on the screen and you have to try to guess what we're trying to say through emojis. Right. Yes. Okay. Um, so first, any announcements for FCA as a whole. Just one, there's going to be a lot of lives after us. Um, Hillhead Christian is today and then May River's tomorrow, so just make sure that we check into those so that we're showing love to every huddle. Um, yeah. Anything else? Um, I don't think so. We can go ahead and open in prayer. Alrighty. Do you want to open? Sure. Okay. Right. Bow your head. Alright, here we go, guys. Um, dear Lord and Heavenly Father, thank you for the opportunity that we have right now. This morning, this awesome morning that you've given us to um, open up the Bible and talk about you, God. And Lord, I just pray for everyone watching today that they might be encouraged by what they hear today. That, Lord, we might know that it's a good morning and that... Um, we thank you for putting breath in our lungs. We love you, Lord. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right. So I'm going to sit down here, and we're going to put up... Doo -doo -doo. We're going to put up our first saying. So you guys are going to try to guess what it is. Oh, shoot. Wrong one. There we go. All right. All right. So it's going to be the first one commented by us. And so the first one to guess it. Yes. What is the first, guys? <laughs> is it? Yeah, it's going. Okay. All right, Hayden got it with hot dog. All right, <laughs> that perfect. Quick. Fox. Guys, guys. <laughs> okay, the next one is coming up. Is that... There we go. All right. So the next person who can guess this one, here, you might need to move to this side a little bit. Yeah, so you can see it. All right, so the next one to guess it, you know, put all your guesses in, even if you don't know it. Cold feet. Gosh. We Gosh. Not okay. We're not <laughs> all right. Um, <laughs> so this is our a little hard show. Cold feet was right. Nice. Okay. So here's our next one. Oh my gosh! I hit the wrong one. Okay. There we go. Alright, I don't think you guys will get this one. Alright, this one is... This is a biblical you know. reference. Good morning, Jesse. <laughs> Alright, first person to get it. Put your guesses in. I think we stumped him with this one. Can I know. One. Almost. Gosh. Hey, Fox got it. Good Jesus green. Turn. Okay. <laughs> Good job, everyone. Fox, I think you win the whole thing. Um... So yeah. Fox, you get this honorary bottle of cleaning supplies. Yeah. We will get it to you as soon as possible. It's in short supply, so uh, we got your needs covered. Yes, so stay <laughs> tuned because we got one more at the end for you. Yes. <laughs> Alright, so we want to first start off with our, we're on day eight of our devotional, so we're going to follow that, and it's Galatians 6-9 is what we're primarily focusing on, 
And that is. <laughs> what? <laughs> they said they can hear me say the stuff. Oh gosh. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. Um, yes. So. Galatians 6 9 is let us not get tired of doing what is good and just the right time we will reap the harvest of blessing and we won't give up so something that we kind of want to look at and focus at with that one specifically is doing good even in the midst of having someone go against you or even the world against you because we all know it's not easy to always um, stand against what's going on especially something that is positive and could help people, there's a lot of negative backlash sometimes. Yeah, definitely. Um, one thing that we want to show from the Bible and an example of someone doing good even when um, you get backlash and it's not popular is a story from Mark 14. So um, in the Bible, um, in the New Testament, in the Gospels, there was a woman that approached Jesus. And so whenever she saw Jesus, she poured and a perfume bottle over his head and so the disciples with them were like why would you do this like this perfume was worth a year's worth of salary and you just broke it and wasted it all here and so she received um, kind of hate for what she did but Jesus said you know what um, there's always gonna be um, an abundance of poverty but not always people doing good and so it was cool because she's recognized for what she did for Jesus and it's cool because the Bible says um, she truly I tell you wherever the gospel is preached throughout the word the world what she has done will be told in memory of her so you know what it's not always easy to do what's right and we know that but it's rewarding and when you live by integrity you're gonna get respect and you're gonna get to show who Jesus is so we just want to share that mm -hmm. um, so another thing we want to encourage you guys to do is to just always walk in humility. There's a lot of times where whether you're playing sports or whether you're with your friends or whether um, your parents tell you to do something and you have the opportunity to do what's right or to do your own thing. But when you stay humble, um, you get to show Christ and you just get to stay true yourself. And that's what we're here for is just multiplying the kingdom and just being kind of like lighthouses for Christ. Because if we're not doing that fully, then how, like if we're not doing that publicly, how can we as Christians be trusted to do it privately, if that makes sense? Because Jesus even says like, you know, show, make disciples of all the nations, go out and do this. And so, I mean, it's definitely faced with adversity a lot, but yeah. I mean, the good fight is the good fight and it ultimately ends up going for something much greater than what we understand here or what we understand in that moment. Yeah, for sure. So we talked about yesterday, um, I was actually cooking and I was <laughs> pulling pork in, for dinner and so I got splashed with some hot pork juice. And anyway, so we just made a connection because, you know, when you're young and your mother tells you do not lean on the stove top because you will get burnt. And so, um, maybe if you've never been told that, we're telling it to you now. Don't <laughs> lean on, don't lean on the stove top. Especially after they cooked something. Yeah, yes, I <laughs> learned that. But, um, anyway, so we say that because, well, duh, you're, you shouldn't do that. But also because it's the same way with God. God makes, um, a guideline for our life because he loves us and that is his word. And he sets things in place for us so that we don't get hurt and he sets everything at a proper time and so all the time we want to go by our own way it's just our human nature and we know that but when we follow God's way um, we're gonna just experience life abundantly and how he designed it to be and we won't get burned which is always good because that hurts yes um, I'm not getting burned. yeah something that we wanted to highlight because we know going off of Galatians 6 9 understanding that like there is going to be the world that is against us for the most part. Um, in 1 John 2, verse 16, it says, For the world offers only a physical craving pl for pleasure, a craving for everything we see, and pride in our achievements and possessions. And we kind of looked at this because we were like, okay, the world is going to be our biggest kind of thing that stands against us. It's our biggest challenge in a way. And this verse really clearly explains like what we see, like the lust for the flesh, the lust for the eyes, and 
that's kind of what stands against a lot of what we're doing, a lot of that good work, because we're following things that are definitely more temporary than what God can fulfill us for. I think we can all speak from experience, like, you know, working for Christ and even just being a servant for Him is a lot more fulfilling than, you know, doing things of the world and just falling into worldly pleasures which I mean as it says it's only physical and we know that's very very temporary rather which is differs from the comparison of God's eternal grace and love so. yeah you're right a lot of times we put our trust in things we can see and so that's where having faith comes into play you know faith is the reality of what is hoped for and the proof of what we cannot see. Mm -hmm. So we can't, like, we trust in a chair that it's going to catch us, but we can't see, like, the power that it has that's holding us. Um, and we know that gravity's there, but we can't see it. And so we have faith in the Lord that He has a plan for our lives and that we can trust in Him. And then a very popular verse is Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, which says, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans, um to prosper you and not to harm you, but to give you a hope and a future. So when we follow God's plan, you know, everyone always says, trust the process. Um, we're not going to get burnt. We're going to be able to live by the Spirit and not by the flesh and just find that satisfaction that we can't find in anything else. So um, always just trust, trust in the Lord, trust yes. in the plan that He has for our lives. And ultimately, we all know it's a choice whether to follow the word or the world and kind of just we understand that God gave us free will and a decision um, so just being committed to making this decision for the kingdom rather than the earthly kingdom um, definitely makes a difference like the hot stove analogy like your parents would be like oh don't touch it and you're like okay well do I touch it do I not touch it and as a little kid you're like sometimes you test the boundaries mm -hmm. and it's really easy to test it and then because I know from personal experience even touching it the stove before, I mean, I know this is a really kind of childish analogy, but it works so well to where if you touch the stove, you'll get burned because it doesn't always look hot, but you have to trust that your parents know what's ta what they're talking about. And it's kind of the same way with God, like trusting what he's saying to us and that, you know, that there is so much hope and there that we have to have faith to what he says so that we're able to get the plentiful abundance of life that is promised to us in the Bible. Yeah, definitely. And um, two verses that just popped into my mind when Kate was talking was another popular one, Jeremiah twenty nine eleven, which says, "Oh wait, I quoted Jeremiah twenty nine eleven before." <laughs> Sorry. Okay, but anyone, um, another one is trust in the Lord with all your heart, lean not on your own understanding, and all your ways submit to Him. He will make your path straight. So yeah, we're just talking, just trust in Him. And then another one is John ten ten, which says. Um, the devil comes to steal, kill, and destroy, but I have come to give you life so that you may have it abundantly. So um, that's just Jesus saying, you know what, all these things in the world, they might look great. They might look great for a season. They might feel great, whether that's your stats, whether that's your performance in sports, your performance in school, um, how you look. like that. All this stuff is temporary, but what we want you guys to realize is that when you trust in the Lord, it's a walk and a relationship that lasts all your life, and He will never let you down. Um, I've learned that before, trying to put my faith in my friends and find satisfaction in my friends instead of in God. And when you put your stuff and your faith and your satisfaction in the world, you're going to get burnt. Yes. Yeah. And we have a lot of time right now. Um, you know, with all the docks closing, every... Th I'm sad about Yeah, that. a lot of the public places that we all once really enjoyed and liked to take advantage of are now closed. So we have the choice whether or not what we're going to practice in our private homes if we're going to get burned or if we're going to listen and trust our faith and what God's saying, because we do have that choice ultimately of what we're going to do. So that's our challenge for y'all today is to not get burned. Yes. Sometimes it feels good to get a sunburn because it looks nice, but it always peels away after. So the reward isn't as good as what is intended for yes. that stuff. Yes. So don't test the boundaries because when you get burnt, you're never going to be satisfied. All right. We're going to do our last, um, puzzle thing and then we're gonna pray and while I load it do you want to do the final announcements for who's speaking next? Okay, sure thing. Um, so like we were talking about earlier we have lots of cool, I'm not gonna say what it is this time <laughs> you guys can't hear. Um, 
Anyway, so we have another FCI huddle today at 11 at this page. It's Christian Academy, so stay tuned. Yes. Tomorrow morning we have um, May River in the morning. Do you know what time? 9.30. Same time as us. Yes. And then tomorrow evening is Hilton Head Prep. So you guys join in. We'd love to see you. We love it when you guys yes. participate. So I bet you guys won't get this one. This one is in honor of it being April 1st. So... We'll do that real quick. All right, guys, what is that one? <laughs> You're like, what the heck? It's okay. We got this off of Pinterest. Guys, we stumped y'all with this one. Daniel Harrington mm. and... Oh, wait, that's... Oh, that's who's speaking for tomorrow. <laughs> okay, guys, what is our Pictionary thing that we just posted? Also, don't forget to end the week with Hilton at High on Friday because, mm -hmm. you know, we're going to try to score all the huddles and get them all out of here. Yes, so. for sure. We'll see. If anyone can guess that last one, and then we'll pray real quick. Guys, we got y'all. <laughs> we'll give it about a minute, and then we'll wrap up. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to, like, waste it. Like, go over time too much. Do you guys need a hint? <laughs> okay, y'all don't get a hint. <laughs> so no one's responding. Okay, we stopped them with this one. Someone's, like, probably looking it up on their phone right now. Like, what is it? <laughs> okay, we'll give it another like 20 seconds. So give us your best guess. Okay. Um, <laughs> oh, a hint. Yeah. A hint? A question mark. Okay, um. It's a. It's a procedure. It is a procedure. Hello, JJ. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a procedure. Yeah. You guys are good. Okay. Should we go ahead and say it? <laughs> okay. So in honor of it being April first, it was Botox. So that's yes. that's funny. Huh? Sorry, got wait, Fox just guessed it. Yes. Good job, okay, Fox. perfect. Fox again, you win. So we're gonna pray real quick. Um I'll close this out and then hopefully you guys have a great day. So bow your heads, close your eyes wherever you are. <laughs> um Father, we just thank you for allowing us to have some fun on our lives, Lord, that we're able to just continue to reach out into a world that right now isn't having a lot of hope, Lord, that we're just able to spread some light in this darkness. Father, I ask that you let us leave here today, go off this app, and just continue to spread the good news of the Lord and how, you know, what's promised by the heavenly kingdom is far greater than what the earthly kingdom can ever give. You know, it's eternal versus temporary, Lord, and let us just work for that eternal glory, Lord, of you and just being able to be surrounded in your love in this time of loneliness and this time of self-isolation in a way that we're just able to prosper with you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. All right. Don't forget to tune in at 11 for Hillhead Christian Academy. Happy right. April!